Soon, wet wind came to give the twins the numbers. Dollar was mine, and Douglas came. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. You may have noticed, Dougie, that yon painters forgot something. What did they forget? They painted broad new numbers on our tenders, but they put none on us. Donald winked broadly at his twin. You mean, grinned Douglas, that we can... Just that, chuckled Donald. Who'd you wished? Here's the inspector. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. Twins enjoyed themselves, and were soon friends with Duck. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods trains and coaches easily. For once the twins had shunted them, trucks knew better than to try any tricks. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a fuss yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. <whistles> Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't be making fun of us, would you now? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the both of you, and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express. It is called the Wild Nor'wester, and is full of people from England, Wales and Scotland. There is also a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. When the other coaches are taken away empty, engines have to remember to shunt the special coach to the bay platform. It doesn't wait there long. Thomas, with Annie and Clarabelle, comes hurrying from the junction to fetch it. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a good strain to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself, when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding, then ambled along to join Donald at the water column. As he went, Thomas scampered by, whistling cheerfully. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Lost sake, said Douglas. I more than stowed the special coach with the others. Do you see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the fat controller. He'll be coming here next. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then a wire with ye, Donald, and take yon goods. Dinner flash about us. Quick now. 
Do as I say. The fat controller and three passengers walked towards them. But Donald, with Douglas's tender, number 10, was out and away with the goods before they came near. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said the fat controller, number nine. And why have you not taken the goods? May a tender is a wire, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see. Some defect, no doubt. Tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Maybe, sir, put in Douglas. He saw you come in and thought he was late. Ah, huh, said the fat controller. He turned to the passengers. Here, gentlemen, are the facts. Number ten has been shunting the yard. Your coach disappeared. We investigate. Number ten, um, disappears too. You, you can draw your conclusions. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. His shoulders twitched. He wiped his eyes. Douglas wondered if he was crying. He wasn't. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? 